Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Elevate Your Life podcast. Cheryl, we are doing number 118 today. 118. And yep. we are ready for it, Paul. This, you gotta love this is Tuesdays. An exciting you know, we, we have a new mindset topic every single Tuesday. And Cheryl spent Cheryl and I spent a lot of time thinking of these uh, titles to run with and do a lot of brainstorming. So this one we put a lot of time and effort into. So I'm really excited about this podcast, Cheryl. Yeah, I love it. it it's a really good one. And it kind of explains what I like about it is it explains why. So the name of it is why the 12 reasons why people don't reach their goals. And I love to just become aware of what the problem may be, kind of see where I'm at on each of these um, 12, 12 different items and see if there's, you know, where I can make um, those adjustments and be, and become better. Yeah. Yeah. And we're taking this. So we literally, Cheryl and I work with thousands and thousands of people. Um, we both have 25 years experience. So we started when we were five, which is kind of young to start, but, um, <laughs> well, I was a little younger, but I won't, say <laughs> uh, but we, you know, we gained a lot of experience, worked with a lot of people. So we know why people don't reach their goals. So they're, they're missing one or more of these things we're going to go over. So while you're listening to this podcast, kind of take some notes. And if you want the notes from this podcast, you can go to elevateyourlife.com, get the notes there, but also be thinking which one of these applies to me, you know? Well, it, maybe even where, maybe even where you're at on a scale from one to 10, like where, you know, yeah. one being like, mm, gosh, I didn't even know that existed. Right. Because there's some things on here years ago that I had no idea about. Right. Right. And then five being, oh, I'm okay. I'm pretty good. It's all right. I'm, I'm okay. And then, you know, 10 being, okay, I got it. No problem. And, you know, then you can work on, then there may be something else that you can work on. Yeah. We should probably call us the top 12 reasons instead of the top, or instead of the 12 reasons, because there could be more reasons. But these are the ones that we find most oh. common in people. Yeah, So, Cheryl, number one is, is pretty uh, fascinating, because I know um, you deal with a lot of women that have just stopped making New Year's resolutions completely. They haven't, they stopped setting goals. Well, that's true. They, you know, um, I mean, I, I think when you set a goal and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go, set a goal and then never achieve it, then it just gets to be like, mm, I don't want to do it anymore. Right. Right. But the first one has to be, and, and you guys, this is made, this really has probably made one of the biggest differences in my life ever is, um, the very first one here is that you have to be crystal clear on what you want. Right. So a lot of people have no idea. We say, well, what do you want? You know, we can help you get what you want. What do you want? Uh, I don't know. I know what I don't want, right? but I'm not sure what I do want. Right. And so that's, so that's what we're finding. I think is one of the most, well, I think it is the most important place to start is yeah. what do yeah. you want? What's the result you want? I mean, your whole, so your find a fabulous movement. Um, the tagline yeah. is live the life you want. And what's fascinating is, how many people don't know the life they want to live? <laughs> At least yeah. not clear on it. Like they have ideas, like I want to have more money or this, or you know, more free time or something, but they're not specific on, on the things they want in their life and the way they want their life to look. So the number one thing is to, first of all, set a goal, set a result. So Cheryl and I always talk about RPM and that's basically what the first three are here. We're, look, we're asking what is the result you want to achieve and be very specific on that result. Yeah. Uh, which, so that's number, number one reason is people aren't crystal clear on, on the result that they want. Number two, Cheryl. Oh, they don't have a strong enough purpose or why. What is your why? Why do you want that life? Why do you want all of those things that you want? Yeah, this one is, you know, when I look at the rest of them, if you don't, if you have, I'm sorry, if you have this one, you may not need the rest because if the why is so strong and you're so driven, you can accomplish anything. I've seen this completely change people's lives when they figure out why they want what they want. Yeah. And remember, it doesn't always have to be like a great reason because my why for the longest time is to prove everybody wrong that bullied me, right? Or that reason. made fun of me. So, yeah. And so, but I think that that's true, Paul, because if you, if your why is big enough, then 
you will just make it happen and you'll 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 run through a brick wall to make it happen yeah yeah and you will end up getting things that you couldn't even imagine yeah so we talk about soon to be brides you know they're the weight loss you know when we're working with people want to lose weight soon to be brides they have a big enough why they're getting married they're having this big reception they're getting pictures taken they want to look great in that dress so the the why is so strong that they just do amazing where 99 percent of all people fail on on weight loss they excel at it so and it's all because of the why so you got to right. why number three cheryl so it is uh a lot of people have the wrong strategy mm. so it's strategy easy. matters well not really but i guess it's good to have no i'm just kidding yes it does matter and it's super important because if you don't have a strategy um then i think you can be real kind of flighty kind of Mm -hmm. flighty and moving from hither to thither yeah so we're just talking about you know want to take a trip we're going someplace we're going we have a a place we want to get to we know why we want to go there now just add like a map you know and try to draw draw out a map and I, i don't think people take this this one seriously enough where I think if they're they're booking a vacation they got you know when we land when we're going to luggage when we get there we're going to take this excursion at this point and this one at this you know and they have this the whole thing mapped out like the whole week is like minute by minute um but they don't plan their lives out that way they're just like well we'll see what happens yeah you know there's there's they have a they know what they want they know why they want it but they never have really sat down and wrote that plan out of how they're going to get it or they're using the wrong plan. So having the right strategy is absolutely essential. Yeah, now listen, we've talked about these first few, right? But this is what I think, Paul. So number four, if you don't have number four handled, then I don't know as the first three matter, okay? So, I mean, all of these kind of go hand in hand. So number four is that we find a lot of people, Paul, that are in a weak emotional state. Yeah, fear stops just about everyone. It's the number <laughs> one reason why people don't achieve their goals is because they have fear. And Cheryl, I always thought that, well, why would people be f- so afraid of failing? Like, we f- we fail all the time. We're supposed to. I was wrong to. about that. Yeah, but we're supposed to fail. Like, you look right. at it like, hey, listen, if you want to win, I, I hear this all the time. If you want to win, if you really want to be good, well, you've got to fail because you've got to learn. And right. you've got to grow, right. right? And so now, now go ahead with what you're saying, because I think it's so amazing when we kind of figured out what's happening, and it's not the fear of failure that's stopping people. No, it's the fear of what other people think of them. <laughs> or yes. you. what's worse yet is you don't even oh. know if that's true. You just think that they're, they may think in the future that what you're doing is wrong or crazy or whatever. So you don't do it because you you're afraid that how they might act towards you if you do that. Well, right. And the other thing too is you might be completely off in, you know, maybe they're having a bad day and they look at you cross crossways or whatever the whatever, and you're like, oh, they hate what I'm doing. That's it. I'm quitting. Or I'm not gonna do it because they don't like it. It, it has nothing to even do with that. So I love that you said that, Paul because I think a lot of times more than not, that's what it is. Well, people want to fit in. You oh know, yeah. Where, where it is that you're trying to get into, oh. but whether it's, you know, your church or tennis group or whatever you're doing, um, there's a group of people that you want to become friends with, you know, and you, and you yeah. have this group and, and the group behavior is this. And if your behavior changes, the group may look at you, and be like, you're not even one of us anymore because you changed so much. Yeah, so let's let's just say right now, pick the right peer group. Yeah. You have to pick people to hang out with who, I like to do it with who I wanna be like, right? Yeah. Who, who, who have the same, who have the same standards and morals and all of those things that I do. So this is actually just recently with a study done, this actually became number one on the list of reasons why people succeed or fail is who's who they're around. Because because environment controls behavior. And if you're in an environment where everyone's at Orange Theory working out and, and 
eating keto and doing all this, then you're going to be fantastic. But if you're in a donor of the month club or donor of the week club, <laughs> donor of the donor day, of club, the day. Um, the DOD, you know, donor <laughs> <of> the <day. laughs> you're not going to do good in the weight loss program here. Right. Right. Absolutely. That is so, so true. So well, what you lo- alluded to earlier, Cheryl, was, was uh, women yeah. having the fear of letting themselves down. And I, I didn't understand this, but so ex- explain this a little bit to everyone. Oh, well, it's just that, um, you know, you say, oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Or let me set a goal. Okay. I'm going to try really hard. Um, and, and then you do a little bit and then you quit or something comes up or something happens. Um, and then you let, and and you let yourself down. I mean, that's really what the bottom line is. And you just have to say, you know, and and let me caution you moms a minute. And I say moms, because it seems like I'm in this time period in my life where I'm like, ah, going crazy with kids going, you know, different directions and everything else. And I think that there's a huge difference, Paul, between, setting a goal and letting yourself down and saying, Hey, I'm doing too much. I have to step back and reassess and make sure that I can handle and do all of the things that are coming at me like a million at a time. Right. And I, I, I want to just caution you that, that if you need to do that and reassess and kind of step back and say, Hey, listen, I can't do that or I'm talking to myself, Paul, I think. Um, But I think that that's okay. And don't look at that like you're letting yourself down or you're not able to achieve something that you had, you know, set out to achieve. Yeah, I think, you know, so in the Marines, I remember that they, afterwards they tell you this, that we specifically gave you too much to do in a day. There's no human being that could do all that. But we wanna see if if you're good at prioritizing. Like, did you get the things that were most important done? Cause you're not gonna get them all done. No one ever gets them all done. Yeah. Um, so I like that it's knowing which, which ones are the most important, but you know, Cheryl, this whole thing is about really about a story. People tell themselves that, you know, I, um, you know, these people won't like me, or if I do this again, I'm going to feel down. Like all this is just a story you're telling yourself and, and the exact opposite of fear, which is a, just an emotional state is, and most of the time it's false. I love the, the analogy of, of, it, um, the acronym of it being a uh, false evidence appearing real. Yeah. That's what fear is. Yeah. It really hasn't happened yet. You're just fearing that it could happen. Uh, right. But the exact opposite of fear is this thing called absolute certainty, which we talk about a lot. And again, it's nothing more than a state of mind. Like I am absolutely certain I can do this. Whatever this is, she'll call me all the time. Hey, can we do this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Now I have no idea how to do that. But I'm absolutely certain we'll figure it out because I one of my core beliefs is everything's figure outable. I yeah. can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's a core belief of mine. So of course we can do it. You know, it's, it, and, 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 and ju- it's nothing more than added. It's not because I'm super smart or I'm talented or any of those things. It's just that I have a state that's that a state of mind. It's I am certain we can do this. Yeah. Which I think is fascinating. Number five, Cheryl, which is another big one. Yeah, Yeah. limiting beliefs. Gosh, doubt. Doubt, I think, is a huge limiting belief. And and, and it's doubt in yourself, right? When we say limiting belief, that's what we mean, I think. And and I think that's a huge one. You know, oh, somebody told me, uh, you know, years and years and years ago that I wouldn't amount to anything. And here I am, you know, and, and, and oh, and look what happened. It came true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it's the doubt. And I think most of it is in ourselves. Oh yeah. We know we say, oh, well he or she could do it, but I, I, I can't do that. I'm not good enough for that. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's all kinds of limiting beliefs like, oh, I'm just too old to do that. Or I'm too young to do that. Or I'm yeah. too tall to do that. Or I'm too <laughs> thin to do that. I mean, people come up with all kinds of stories, which are this limiting beliefs. They're not, you know, those strong beliefs beliefs like I was going through before where everything's figure outable. Like that's a core belief. And and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is a core belief of mine. So I never say that I'm, I can, I doubt that I can do it or that I'm too young or too old or any of that stuff. Well, and it's that simple, Paul. And I love this whole idea of change your story, change your life. Yeah. Because it is a story. Whatever you're telling yourself is the story of your life. And 
that's your perception. That may not even be what really happened or how it happened, but that's what, that's what you believe. I tell my kids this all the time. Hey, listen, that's your perception. And let's go ask your sister. That's what I say to my son. And I say it to both of them, but whoever I'm talking to, let's go ask your sister and let's hear her perception because it could be totally different. So her story about what's happening is completely different than your story about what's happening, which I find so, so fascinating. And it's that simple to change it. Yeah. Right. It's that simple, which I love though. I I love it when it's simple and it's just like a a bit of a mind mindset shift. Shift. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you have this, so the most important belief that you beliefs you have are about yourself. So I believe I'm blank like that, whatever you say after that's super important. Yeah. Um, and we talk about identity all the time. So that's really what your identity is. Like I'm, I'm not very good at following a diet or I'm not good at being consistent with anything. Like yeah, once you say that, am. you might as you're just, you're committing suicide. Yeah. I mean, you're just, you have no chance of being successful from that moment forward because you built a belief that I'm just not good at being consistent. Yeah. Which is a story. It's all made up. So it's real, real important to get clear on these beliefs of yours and, and really do some self-examination on what am I saying to myself that's causing me to not go after what I want to go after at a hundred percent. Yeah, that's, that's, and, and again, it's this quick, right? You can change your story that fast, which is just, I mean, it's, um, it's like when I found that out, it like took all this weight off off of me, right? It was like, oh, just change my story. That's not what happened. This is what happened. Look at it like, you know, that that's certainly, that definitely could be true, right? So, okay, well, let's talk about number six. We are moving right along here. And number six is we find, Paul, a lot of people that cannot get out of their comfort zone. Yeah. We got to Well, I remember a super interesting story, one of the main stories I remember from you is you were at some sort of convention or something and and you were talking in a group and Steve and Michelle were with you. Oh, yeah. And how did it go? Like, I don't understand why I'm not su- successful or something. And Steve. No, I was talking to Steve and I said, well, Steve, you know, what do you think is going on? I mean, this is so, you know, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm just like stuck. Like I can't. Your business is not growing. Anymore. I can't do any more. I've already done all of this and I can't do any more. And he said, oh, Cheryl, you're just comfortable. Yeah. You're just. And I said, oh my gosh, I am comfortable, right? I mean, it was like such an eye opener for me, such an eye opener, right? So, and I think that, and I think when you get comfortable and here's the other thing, Paul, it doesn't matter what situation you're in, you could look at that as your comfort zone, right? Oh, like you can't get your bills paid every month and you know, it's hard to feed your kids and all of these things, but it's still comfortable. Oh yeah. You know, the, a, a great analogy is, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get the second base in baseball. Um, and I, I'm not getting there. So I'm, I can't figure out why I can't get the second base. Well, if you're still in love with first base <laughs> and you, this is like, it's wonderful over here. I got a great view. It's everything's perfect. Why would you want to go to second base? So not only do you have to really want to go to second base, you have to not like first base anymore. I know that's, that sounds kind of weird to some people, but you know, when I, when we saw that analogy of those two buildings burning down and this, well, this oh. b- building was burning down over here and you had to walk across the blank to a burning, burning building. You're like, I'm not walking across no plank to a burning building. So you would never do it. But if you change which building is burning, no the one you're on no. is burning. No, the way that, but, then, but here's the thing. This is what I remember. So there's no way you're going towards the burning building. You just wouldn't do it. Yeah. But all of a sudden, your child pops up in the window, help. Mm, yeah. I can promise you, you'd get across the plank Absolutely. in a real quick hurry. Yep. Right. So it goes back know. to the why. The yeah. why is so big that I'm going to do it now. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and another thing, you know, so um, I remember when I, um, so I, you know, uh, decided I was going to open my own business. 26 years ago. And I literally went to work at nine o'clock in the morning and said, I quit. I didn't give him a two week notice. I just quit that, that moment. (laughs) But from that moment on, like walking, I remember that feeling still today of walking out of there being like, I just, I didn't just burn a bridge, like 
like the the guy that he was 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 the owner of the place and he i mean he hates me hates me you know it means like i ran everything so to have someone just come in on a monday morning and say i quit like i'm burning the, that boat big time like i'm not going there's no chance ever i'm going to go back there you know yeah. so if you really want to be successful it's, it's burn those boats and make it impossible to go back to that comfort zone yeah um and the other thing cheryl here is that we, we know that 90 some percent of the population has certainty as their number one need. Yeah. You know, and they just, and I, we talked about this earlier and I, I know this is near and dear to your heart about having the, being willing to, to change. Oh yeah. You have to be. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. You have to change, right? You're going to change. Yeah. You have to, to move out of your comfort zone. You will change, but you have to be willing to do it because if you don't even have a little inkling of willingness, then you're never going to get out of there. Yeah. You will never take the steps that it takes for you to get out of there. Yeah. And we're not, you know, we're not talking about some direct. So we talk every day about elevate your life 1%, which means you're changing every day. You're becoming better, which means you're not your old person anymore. Like the, I always talk about the iPhone um, and how I look at my life as like an iPhone where this is Paul version 49 that's out now. Well, then there's going to be Paul version 50, which is going to be better than version 49. But if I look back at Paul 30, like I'm so much better than that now. So I've changed so much over the years and I can see that positive change in myself. Um, so yeah, we're always changing and you got to be willing to change. What's number seven, Cheryl? Okay. So we find that a lot of people are not consistent with following a strategy. Come on. In fact, they may not even have one. <laughs> Yeah, but this but you, has it's everything. amazing how many people have one and don't follow it. That's crazy. Right. Well, and you know, this has everything to do with self-discipline and sticking to the, the things that you know that you have to do every day to be successful, to get you from here to there, right? To where you want to be. And then be able to do that every single day. And I love the whole penny story. So, you yeah. know, if you double a penny, so that means like, let's say if you follow your routine, as boring as it may be, Paul, because sometimes it gets boring. Sometimes it's the exact same and it drives me crazy. But I know that there's five things that I must do every day, right? And so I make sure I get those things done and then I do it every single day. So a penny doubled every day is $5.4 million at the end of the month in 30 days. And if you skip a day or just decide, oh, I'm not gonna do it today. Uh, you skip a day or two along the way um, and you skip every other day, let's say, because you're tired, you're bored, and there's a great new show on Netflix, whatever it may be. But what happens is a penny that you only double every other day in 30 days is $136. Yeah, big That's difference. amazing. Big difference. Yeah. So compounding is super important. Yeah, 100%. So you got to be consistent. I mean, that, that's the best example ever for that. Yep. The next one is, is maybe shocking to some people. So it's, it's, they don't love the process, you know? So there's, let's just take a professional football player. So they play on Sundays and they're like, well, listen, I just want to show up Sunday at one o'clock to play the game. I don't want to come Monday through Saturday and practice. And for well, I think a game today. sounds good. Just go to the game, you know, so <laughs> they, they, want to, they want to win. They want to <laughs> achieve the goal, but they're not enjoying the process. And, right. you know, I, again, Going back to James Clear in the, in the book Atomic Habits, he talks about the process is more important than the end goal because if you do the things that you need to do, so if you want to lose weight, you got to exercise every day, drink your water, um, eat a great diet, you know, take your supplements, all that, you know. So there's like four or five things you got to do every single day. If, you, if, you, if that's the process we're talking about, everything in life has a process. Yeah. So it's really enjoying that. And I love, I always go back to lion mode and, and, and the lion video of that lions just don't want to catch the gazelle. I mean, they love to hunt. Yeah. They just want to go and hunt things, you know, and then you got to, so you got to kind of love that in your life where you loving the grind, loving the work you're putting in every day. That's really where the, the satisfaction comes in. Winning is great. Like we'll get there and we're going to celebrate and that's awesome. But it's just the daily grind that, that you got to fall in love with. I love that, Paul. And that's what my son always says. He's 14. And I'm like, like, how you doing today, buddy? And he goes, grinding it out. Grinding it out. Love the it. Daily yeah. grind. 
every single day. But I'm sure he says it in a positive way. Like, oh, he like, does. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. No, he loves he loves the tennis grind. What is what does he what does it say? I I, I uh, just doing the grind. What is it? Oh, I say, um, how you doing today? And he said, just grinding it out. Just grinding it out. Daily okay. grind. I gotta. I'm gonna write that down because that's. I'm gonna. That's awesome. I love that. Grind it out. Okay, so number nine. Um, we are finding that people are not obsessed with what they want to achieve. You have to be one thousand percent obsessed, like enough to be fourteen and daily grinding it out. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's obsessed. Tony, Tony, so Tony Robbins just came out with a, a just recently had a class with him and he came up with, he looked at all the people who are successful in the whole, whole world and, and everyone he knows. And he's like, what's the common denominator between these people? Why are some people successful and some people not? Yeah. And this was number one is that he found that every single person that was massively successful was just obsessed with whatever they're doing. So your son is obsessed with tennis. Like he's just doing it all. You know, like there's no way. I know your husband, Jonathan's running for Senate now. Now, is he obsessed with becoming a senator or is he just kind of, oh, we'll see what happens? Yeah, well, absolutely. And they just have the exploratory committee out right now. But let me tell you, he is obsessed. Yeah. With, you know what he's obsessed with, though, Paul? It's very interesting. It's not that he's obsessed with becoming a senator. He's obsessed with saving the country. Yeah, yeah. He loves the country more than anybody I've ever met. Yeah, right? but it, I mean, it's going to take someone it. who's that obsessed to to make the changes we need, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now this is number 10 here, but it's number two on on uh, what uh, Tony's on the list common of, denominators. Of, of things, yeah. yeah. Which is massive action. Everyone takes massive action. So they don't just, they're not just obsessed. They go all out and they, you know, they keep on doing and doing and doing and just whatever it takes. They, they're, they're, you know, justice is, how many hours a week and day are they busy practicing? I mean, just it's oh, all out. Hours, yeah. And it's the same way with, with, with anybody, right? An Olympic athlete or anything like that. It's the same thing. And I love, Paul, that you said doing, not thinking. We don't need to think about it. We need to actually get into this massive action and do it. That's true. But <laughs> number 11 is that we're stopping... I like yeah. to stop once so we can check the compass. So if your goal yeah. is to see a sunset and you're taking massive action running east, you're never going to see a sunset. <laughs> you might, <laughs> but it'll be a sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a sunset, Cheryl. Sunrise. <laughs> it'll be the sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to see the sun, just not setting. Yeah. So uh, you have to stop review. And so the, the big thing is make adjustments. Yeah. Because no one, no one's strategy in the beginning, this was the really, I think the biggest lesson my, in the past like five years for me was I was Mr. Strategy. Well, and it must be working with you, Cheryl, that this has come out. <laughs> because every strategy I've had in the beginning has never worked out that way. It's always the adjustments we make along the way that ends up making it work. Sure. But the, I think it's super important to have the initial strategy, but knowing that you're going to have to keep on tweaking it just like Edison did. You know I mean? He did, he didn't just try the light, making the light bulb once and, and like, oh, forget it. This doesn't work or two or three times. Like he did 10,000 different times, but every time he didn't fail, he just learned a new way not to make the light bulb. And yeah. through those small adjustments, we have this thing called, we have these things called light bulbs. Oh, now we can actually yeah. see things. Electricity. Yeah. yeah. Electricity. <laughs> that, well, that's just crazy. I mean, that's so, that's so super amazing. important invention. Yeah. Okay. So number 12, last number, but not least. Yes. Last but not least. So resources are never the problem. We but Cheryl, I don't have enough time. Oh yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you don't have enough money either or, yeah, or the right people or, yeah, not or enough the people. right people. And I mean, there's, and, and you know what this reminds me of is it's just always excuses, right? Yeah. Because like I said, resources are never the problem. It's always a lack of resourcefulness. And this is, this is the one thing shall I really have learned from you. I mean, there's nobody more resourceful than you are. <laughs> I mean, you pull things out that I'm like, how did she do that? You know? So it's never, <laughs> Like, oh, we're missing this or this and missing this or missing that. And she's like, oh, I'll figure out a way. Go get it. <laughs> so it's never the resource that's the problem. It's just having, you know, not being resourceful. Yeah. And you are the queen of resourcefulness. Oh, well, 
Thank you. It's, it's a good quality to have. Yeah. Well, on the farm, you have to be resourceful. You do. You figure it out and make it work one way or the other. That's exactly right. Um, so this is, yeah, those are the 12 that we came up with. Again, the notes are at elevateyourlife.com. You can go there to uh, read these over. And, and like Cheryl said, I think it was a great idea to take each one of these and rate them on a scale from one to 10. Because all of us are probably doing each one somewhat, um, but not at a 10. So you can find out like, oh, that's, that's what I got to focus on more. And yep. again, the word awareness comes up where once you become aware of it, it just seems to get fixed. Yeah. So, um, so awesome. So to elevate your life, you need to do these 12 things yeah. and do them consistently. Yes. And as you do, you can move from fine to fabulous. Awesome. All right, everybody. That was a great podcast for Tuesday. Mindset, we're going to be doing Thursday leadership podcast. So we'll see you on Thursday. Bye.